As we build the culture of Bitcoin, it is crucial that our society has its foundations in a set of coherent and rational first principles. Bitcoin represents an entirely new economic paradigm that challenges many core concepts of our existing system, ideas that have been taken for granted for millennia. As I have explored these paradigm shifts in public discourse, one idea stands out as creating a notable amount of confusion and cognitive dissonance in even those who are deeply immersed in Bitcoin. In a nutshell, that idea is, you can't own Bitcoins. There are a number of thinkers in approaching the question of ownership in Bitcoin who have come to the conclusion that you can't own Bitcoins. They have approached the issue from academic angles of economics and jurisprudence. My own understanding of this idea is informed by the work I did in my explorations of the nature of ownership, which I articulate in my book, Self-Ownership, The Foundation of Property and Morality. Without going deep into the more detailed philosophical basis for the argument, I want to take some time to demonstrate in simple terms why you don't, and can't, own bitcoins. Let's imagine that Satoshi Nakamoto returned and wanted to finally spend the bitcoins that he mined in the first days of bitcoin. For this thought experiment, let's imagine that he wanted to spend the coins mined in block number one. Presuming that he had access to a node in one way or another, he would also need two pieces of information in order to spend the coins. He would need to know the details of the unspent transaction output, the UTXO, referencing the coins he wanted to spend. He would also need to know the private key with which he could sign that UTXO. Anyone with those two pieces of information can spend the coins mined in block number one. The UTXO details that Satoshi would need are... Number one, the transaction ID, a hexadecimal number. Number two, the index of the output. A transaction can have many outputs, so this identifies which output in a given transaction is being spent. Since these coins are freshly mined, the index is zero. That's the number assigned to the first output in a transaction. Number three, he would need to know the value of the coins contained in the output in Satoshis. In this case, it's 50 bitcoins. Since each bitcoin is comprised of 100 million satoshis, the value of this output is 5 billion satoshis. Fourth, he needs to know the locking script, which is also called a script pub key. The script pub key is a small bit of code in Bitcoin's native language called script and is most commonly represented also as a hexadecimal number value. When this value is encoded, it becomes the address. So we can say that the script pub key represents the address that is holding the UTXO as part of its balance. Can you make an ownership claim on a UTXO? As we can see, a UTXO is nothing more and nothing less than four numbers. The transaction ID is a number. The output index is a number. The value of the coins is a number. The script pub key is also a number. If you know these four numbers, you have all of the information necessary to spend a UTXO. Also important to note is that these four numbers are public information by design. Anyone with access to a record of the blockchain has access to these four numbers. In order to claim ownership of a UTXO, you would have to be able to make an ownership claim on four numbers that are public information. There are strong arguments to be made against the legitimacy of intellectual property laws. However, even accepting intellectual property as legitimate under no existing legal system, can you patent, copyright, or trademark a number? There is no legal system on earth where Satoshi or anyone could go to court and make a valid and enforceable ownership claim on the four pieces of information that comprise a UTXO. You can't own a UTXO. The other piece of information required to spend the coins in block one is the private key associated with the script pub key. With knowledge of a private key, one can generate a public key. With that public key, one can generate a script pub key and address. In other words, if you know the private key associated with the coins mined in block one, you know the address holding the coins. In Bitcoin, a private key is a 256-bit number. As we've already established, you can't own a number, so you can't own a private key either. The Bitcoins you say you own 
are nothing more and nothing less than private keys and the UTXOs associated with those keys. If you can't own UTXOs and you can't own private keys, you can't own Bitcoins. This realization has broad implications and represents such a massive paradigm shift that I have no doubt that some people, while accepting as true everything that has just been said, will still refuse to accept the logical conclusion. You might even be one of those people. The change in consciousness required to overcome that cognitive dissonance will take time to manifest. One of the major implications of the truth, that you can't own bitcoins, is that necessarily means you can't steal bitcoins. Only someone with knowledge of a particular private key can spend the UTXOs with which that private key is associated. However, anyone with knowledge of that private key can spend that UTXO. Bitcoin is secure because given the number of possible private keys and with the current available computational resources, it is virtually impossible to randomly chance upon or guess a private key associated with a particular UTXO. It is not completely impossible, though, and this is one of the possible concerns with the introduction of quantum computing. If, hypothetically, some unexpected breakthrough in computing allowed someone to be able to compute the private keys for any given address and, with that private key, the person was able to spend coins, no other individual could possibly have legal standing to claim previous ownership and therefore theft of the coins. We actually saw this scenario play out years ago with brain wallets. In the early years of Bitcoin, people realized that you could use simple words or phrases as the seed for a private key. Unsophisticated individuals used words and phrases that could easily be guessed, such as password or Bitcoin. They put their coins in the associated addresses and had those coins spent by individuals who guessed the simple brain wallet seeds. Today, Brain wallets are seen as highly insecure, and no savvy Bitcoiner would ever dream of using one. The people who guessed the brain wallet seeds didn't steal anything. In similar fashion, if someone happens to glance over your shoulder while you're writing down your wallet's 12-word mnemonic phrase and can manage to memorize it, that person has not stolen anything if they proceed to later empty out your wallet. Of course, if you have a private key on a piece of paper in your house and someone breaks in and steals it, that person is guilty of breaking and entering, trespassing, and burglary. That's because you can own a house and the property on which that house exists. You can also own a piece of paper. If someone steals your phone or laptop and spends coins from a wallet running on that device, they're guilty of theft because you can own a laptop and you can own a phone. If a person simply acquires knowledge of your private key or backup phrase, information for which you cannot make a legal or rational ownership claim, they've stolen nothing if the associated coins are spent. The fact that you can't own Bitcoins and that Bitcoins can't be stolen means that if Bitcoin is money, it's unlike any money that humans have known. No one questions that a stack of $100 bills can be stolen. If they can be stolen, they can be owned. The foundational notion that you can't own bitcoins is provocative. It's challenging. It is a jumping off point for the development of an entirely new economic, philosophical, and legal framework for value exchange. Bitcoin is a revelation. It demands that we question deeply held beliefs if we want to truly be able to use the amazing tool in front of us. Trying to make bitcoin conform to our existing cognitive models necessarily limits us from experiencing Bitcoin's full promise. We are being called to a great adventure, the opportunity to forever change the world as we know it. Heed the call.